Hello, my name is Barishan and uh, well, this is a long awaited list of my top 10 vampire movies. So let's not waste any more time and get the list started. Number 10, Dracula. I'm talking about the 1931 version. I am a big fan of early horror films such as Frankenstein and The Wolfman and this is also one of them. The music is creepy to this very day and the Dracula icon himself wearing a suit wearing a suit and a cape that's all plain black. His hair is tied back and his mouth has vampire fangs soaking with blood. That's an that's how a classic vampire should be. Bella Lugosi owns the role. He looks, acts and basically he is Dracula to this very day. He tops everyone else who has played the title character after this. Number 9, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Based on the classic TV show created by Joss Whedon, the story is about Buffy who is a school cheerleader played by Christy Swanson. She is picked up by an old man played by Donald Sutherland and he believes she is the chosen one to fight the creatures of the night. She kicks their ass with just a wooden stake and I think that's pretty cool. The vampires weren't that scary but they were still creepy though and the film had a ton of heart and was very clever indeed. Number 8 Ultraviolet. This movie is basically the vampire version of Resident Evil. The disease spreads, Mila Jovovich narrates and kicks ass because she's what the studio cares about. But you know what? The plot made much more sense and nothing was a stupid, nonsensical, unlogical, fucknuts piece of trash. First, why can't Resident Evil be like this? And two, I wish this movie had a sequel and three, the acting scenes were badass and the movie itself was awesome. The film itself was also futuristically realistic. Number seven, Blade 2. The story is set in Moscow where Blade meets a vampire leader who wants to make peace with him. Unfortunately his son Nomak wants to kill them both. These vampires of their legacy are ancient vampires who have three-way jaws, boned armoured hearts, night vision and total resistance to silver and garlic. Nomak kills his father causing Blade to kill Nomak finding his weakness. Also his sister dies making her last wish to see the sunlight. While I do love Blade, this sequel at first is exciting but then while you watch it uh, multiple times it starts to dumb down. Number 6, The Lost Boys. The story is about a family of four who move to Santa Carla where the elder son Michael falls for a gang of vampires and becomes one of them. The younger brother Sam and his two best friends must stop the vampires led by David without hurting Michael. This movie had splendidly horrifying visuals, some sense of humour because it's a horror comedy, don't forget. It stayed true to the vampire mythology and all the actors do a fine job and I believe that this is one of Joel Schumacher's best movies to date. Number 5 Blade. Blade was born a damn fire which is half human and half vampire. His mother was bitten during childbirth and therefore his humanity came from his mother and his immortality came from the vampire. Having all their strengths and none of their weaknesses but still aging like a human, arch enemy Deacon Frost 
plans to turn the entire human race into vampires by sacrificing the 12 pure blood vampire leaders to resurrect Le Magra and only Blade can stop them with an anti-vampire serum Dr. Karen Jensen created. This movie kicked pure ass and has been one of my favourite vampire movies ever since. The effects team are the same who did The Lost Boys earlier. It stays very true to the vampire universe. But there's still more to come. Number 4, Underworld. The story starts off as the vampires and werewolves who continuously fight each other. Then a guy named Michael, played by Scott Speedman, is caught in during the fight. Causing Lucian, played by Michael Sheen, to turn him into a werewolf or a lichen, how they call it in the movie. They lock Celine up because she brought him into the vampires played by Kate Beckinsale and as Lucian dies Michael is turned into a hybrid by Celine and in a battle between Victor and played by Bill Nye and Michael the fight ends with Celine killing Victor and they escape. The film in general was just epic the characters are fully fleshed out both and like everyone says it brought an unusual spin on both the vampire and werewolf universe because it was modernized. Number three from Dusty Will Dawn. Directors Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino put their own pulpy spin on the vampire mythology and the results are just badass. If you want action you got George Clooney. If you want hot chicks, you got Juliet Lewis and Sam Hayek. If you got, if you want western, you got Danny Trejo and Cheech Marin, who's got three roles in this movie, by the way. So keep your eyes open. If you want vampires, you have to wait halfway till the movie goes through. The story is about two of the most dangerous criminals who take a family of three into a bar, only to find out that they are trapped full of ancient vampires. This movie will not disappoint any hardcore horror fan, hardcore pulp action fan or B-movie fan as this film comes from the minds of Rodriguez and Tarantino both. Number 2 Daybreakers After Twilight and its sequel butt rape the vampire genre almost killing it, you'd think that we would finally get a good vampire movie? Well we got Daybreakers and boy am I proud. The story is about Edward Dalton played by Ethan Hawke who is looking for a way to increase the human race as the blood supplies are going down. He is then brought by a group of survivors to be introduced to Elvis played by Willem Dafoe, a vampire turned human because he almost got burnt by the sunlight and hid in the river. This gives Edward an idea to find a cure for the vampires thinking that both sun and water can be used to wipe out immortality from the vampires and increase the human race. It has a unique story, it's epic, it's awesome and it's faithful to the respected material. And my number one favorite vampire movie of all time is Interview with the Vampire, the Vampire Chronicles. Well, I've done my plot summary already if you've seen my top 10 best horror film, so I'm not going to get into that. You, you should know how much I love this movie since I placed that film at the number 4 spot, but in this case, I placed this film at the number 1 spot. Well, story, it's there. Characters top notch. Heart full of it, atmosphere well done, gothic thrills 100%, extras bravo, and overall effort it's superbly done so you can see why I like this movie so much. It's like I'm clearly kind of obsessed with it in a way. I've seen this film multiple times and it still doesn't bother me. This film is a great character study and is my single favourite iconic vampire movie and Nothing can stand in its way, not even emo douchebag tween vamps like Edward Cullen from Twilight. So that's my 
list of the top 10 vampire movies. I hope you enjoyed the video. So like, comment and subscribe. If you're feeling extra generous, share as well.